This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard. The whole thing is available on all major podcast providers. Shirley has these bouts. She's gone sick in the head. I read your story. What are you doing in here? It made me feel thrillingly horrible. The trailer for Josephine Decker's nightmarish alt biopic, Shirley. It's one of a string of new horror films directed by women that are set to be released this year. The Evening Standards Arts Commissioning Editor Katie Rosinski says the genre is finally breaking away from a boys' club of directors and becoming an attractive option for women to make their debuts. And this new wave of female-led horror is playing fast and loose with the rule book. Katie joins me. You say women can feel squeamish when they're watching horrors, but for all the wrong reasons. Why is that? Historically, the horror genre has had quite a bad track record when it comes to representing women. If you look back to sort of like classic kind of slasher horrors, it's full of female victims, depictions of quite graphic and often sexualised violence against women. You also have this trope of the final girl, who's the kind of only woman who's allowed to sort of make it out alive of this kind of massive bloodbath. Quite often it's that's because they've been sort of deemed to be more kind of superior or purer than their other kind of female counterparts, which kind of ties into this quite retrograde and conservative puritanical morality that there's a lot of weird stuff around like women and sex in in horror films and I think that a lot of those older films really haven't aged well in terms of their depiction of women. What's typically been the attitude of male horror directors when they've been asked about the lack of female directors or writers in the genre? The male kind of gatekeepers of the genre haven't always responded to criticism of the depictions of female characters or in fact the just general representation on screen and off of women in the genre in um, particularly productive ways. As recently as 2018, Jason Bloom, who's the head of Bloomhouse Productions that works primarily in horror films, um, he was asked about the fact that his company haven't actually at that point employed any female directors and um, his response was to say well you know there aren't many women who are directors and there are even fewer of them who are actually inclined to do horror films so there's always been this kind of weird attitude that somehow I don't know women aren't up to it. Historically, as you say, it's been a bit of a boys club. Is this starting to change? Yeah, definitely. In the past decade or so, actually, um, there's been this really kind of exciting new wave of female filmmakers working in the horror genre. Even recently, like just in the past few months, St Maud, which is the debut film from Rose Glass, has been one of the most anticipated releases of the year. When you pray, do you get a response? Oh, it's like he's physically in me. It's how he guides me. It's now actually number two in the box offices at the moment. It's behind Christopher Nolan's Tenant, and it's actually, you know, considering the the circumstances that cinemas are going through at the moment, it's actually put in a really strong showing. Another sort of horror-esque film that's recently come out is Josephine Decker's biopic of Shirley Jackson who is obviously you know this amazing female horror writer who was writing in the the 40s and the 50s in the US. She's responsible for books like The Haunting of Hill House which was adapted by Netflix a couple of years back. Um, I wouldn't say it was straightforward horror but it definitely plays with the conventions of the genre in kind of interesting ways. What happens to all lost girls? As we see more women directors, writers and actors coming onto the scene, are we also seeing that they're taking the genre in a new direction? Yeah, definitely. I think what's really exciting about some of those films that I've mentioned and also a couple of other um, recent releases is they do kind of delve into that um, really interesting psychological territory or they kind of come at horror almost from a more emotional angle. At the end of the month, a film called Relic is being released. It's um, from a first-time female director, Natalie Erica James, and that is 
set in an old house with three generations of women and it deals with topics like dementia and the burden of caring for an aging parent as well as kind of trafficking in all these the usual horror tropes which yeah felt like a really an interesting way of kind of amping up that sense of terror because you know that's almost quite a universal fear really something like losing grip of a, of a loved one in that way so what do you think makes the horror genre so attractive to female directors for female filmmakers especially ones in the early stages of of their careers it's a genre that has worked with quite low budgets if you think about how kind of classic horror films build tension create a sense of claustrophobia and isolation it's actually quite cheap to do all of those things like you don't need you know vast sweeping locations you can do it all kind of on one quite small set really and also horror films you know they don't always tend to have massive stars attached to them so in a way especially when you consider how often female filmmakers might struggle to get filming especially for their debut feature a film that's cheap to make is always you know a pretty attractive proposition there's also the fact that horror is quite a buoyant market for cinema goers like horror fans um statistically they spend more at the box office they're also quite receptive to kind of new talent and new ideas so i think those kind of practical considerations as as well as being able to like push the genre in new directions make it quite attractive. 